Is it okay to use contraception when you have IIH? Okay, so that's a really great question and something that a lot of people come and ask me about in clinic. Generally, the answer is absolutely yes, because when people have had IH for some time, it's well settled and they want to start on a contraceptive pill, for example, an oral contraceptive or a, or a mini pill, it will usually make absolutely no difference to the IIH. If we're concerned that it might do, then what we would do is increase monitoring. So we might see them just after they'd started the contraceptive pill to check that it hadn't made any impact on their IIH. But I have to say that in our experience here in Birmingham with people being started on contraceptive pills, it seems to make absolutely no difference. We've, we've not seen any problems. And I think that's sort of contrary to the literature because you know, 15, 20 years ago, there was quite a few reports coming through of people who were on the high-dose estrogen oral contraceptive pills, which is how they were made back then, and that was seen to be provoking IIH in these patients. So a lot of the patients were having their contraceptive pills stopped. But that's a different situation when you're on a high-dose estrogen contraceptive pill and it actually gives you IIH. Because in those patients, it's quite appropriate to withdraw the contraceptives. But these days, now, the estrogen content of the contraceptive pills is much, much lower. Even the combined pill. Even the combined pill. We're not seeing cases where, it's, where IIH is caused by the, the contraceptive pill, the combined pill. So we tend to think that the contraceptive pills now, the way they're made is much safer. And we haven't seen people having IIH caused as a result directly of the um, contraceptive pill for many, many years. It seems to be very rare. So as a result of that, we're very happy with people to go on contraceptives. And that would include mini pills, combined pills, and also depots and implants and marina coils. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the coils no. either. And actually, as a sideline to that, it's quite important not to have an unplanned pregnancy in IIH. It makes sense, doesn't it? Especially sometimes if you're on the medications. Yeah. Is it safe to get pregnant on, on certain drugs that are prescribed for IIH? Yeah, that's a good question. So generally, we try not to have people on medications if they are trying to conceive and get pregnant because of the potential risks of the drugs on the formation of the unborn baby and the risks that it could affect the unborn baby's formation. The most important drug to bear in mind that we use in IH is probably topiramate, which we would not want people to be on, particularly in the first trimester when the baby's most at risk of being affected by that drug. But a lot of our patients are also on Diamox and they are thinking of getting pregnant. So what we generally suggest is come and talk to us if you're thinking of planning a pregnancy and we will have a discussion with you to weigh up, is it worth staying on the acetazolamide because your condition is still active? Or is your condition sufficiently controlled that we could take you off the Diamox quite safely and then you could go on to get pregnant without worrying about any risks of the Diamox on the pregnancy? It's kind of uncategorised how much of a risk there is from these drugs on pregnancy. We obviously don't do trials and test how much they affect yeah, yeah. the unborn it's baby. It's understandable. <laughs> it's understandable. But we do know from some of the animal data that potentially acetazolamide can cause effects on unborn babies in animals. But on the other hand, there's been a study of about 50 patients in America that show that all those women that took acetazolamide in the early part of the pregnancy, the first trimester, had normal healthy babies. So we have data to go either way, but we're not confident enough to say it's always safe. So we would kind of weigh it up and say, do you need it? And if we need it, we'll think about continuing it. And if not, we would get rid of it and just have a healthy pregnancy without being on tablets. Is it okay to get pregnant if you have IIA? Yes, yeah, so a lot of our patients, of course, being women of childbearing age, this is a frequent topic of conversation in our clinics because lots of the ladies are going to get pregnant when they have IIH. And actually, the reassuring thing is that these women go on to have very safe, very good pregnancies, and most of them have normal vaginal deliveries at the end. What we would do if you had IIH is we would monitor you more during the pregnancy. We're going to want to make sure that the optic nerve, the papilledema, isn't getting progressively worse during the pregnancy. But actually, for the vast majority, things remain very stable and quiet during the pregnancy, and they're able to go on to have a normal vaginal delivery at the end. In the rare circumstances where IIH is starting to flare up, we'll have to look at how we might treat that during the pregnancy. One of the things that we might uh, think about doing is uh, talking about how to maintain a normal healthy weight during the pregnancy. And actually, there's quite healthy guidelines from the World Health Organization on how much weight you should gain for each week each. of each, for each trimester um, for a pregnancy, and particularly if you start when you're already overweight. So what we don't want to see is weight increasing by more than what you need mm -hmm. to grow a healthy baby. Yeah. So we can give you guidelines on the healthy amount of weight to gain. And we hope that by preventing weight gaining, exponent, gaining um, more than it needs to, we can help prevent the IH from flaring up during the pregnancy. But sometimes we may need to do increased monitoring and sometimes increased lumbar punctures. Yeah. There is a flip side to that, though, in that sometimes we see IH presenting quite aggressively for the first time in people who become pregnant. 
So this is somebody who's never had IIH, they become pregnant and then they start to present with the double vision, the blurred vision and the papilledema. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. often that's much more aggressive than in somebody who's got IIH anyway and mm -hmm. happens to get pregnant. So in those patients who have very aggressive IH in pregnancy, we do need to take quite a lot of care to help them through the pregnancy with a lot of increased monitoring and um, liaising with the, with the obstetricians, the baby doctors, and planning perhaps changes um, in the later part of the pregnancy and altering the birth plan. But generally, it all goes very well. Is it okay to take HRC when you go through the menopause with, with IIH? Yeah, it's an area of IIH that we probably don't see quite as much of because it tends to be a condition of the younger, um, fertile women. But there are a number of my patients that, of course, as they've had IH for a number of years and then they come up to menopause and they're asking about taking HRT. And again, we don't tend to restrict that because we've got no evidence that um, giving HRT to people has actually made their IIH any worse. And for many, many years, we've not seen any reports of people being given HRT and it's starting up IIH for the first time. So we're fairly pragmatic about it. We think that if you need HRT for other reasons, it's important to be able to have that choice to take it. And if you want to take it, then we would just potentially say we will monitor your IIH more closely for the first few months to check it's not interfering at all.